Today we will start lecture 8-1 on KVL, KCL, series and parallel impedances. This is from reading chapter 7.5 to 7.6. At the conclusion of today's lecture, a student should be able to transform a circuit with a sinusoidal source into the frequency domain by using phasor representation or the, to the complex number domain and be able to apply KVL and KCL to circuits with sinusoidal sources as well as combine impedances in parallel and in series. Recall that the impedance of a resistor is R, the impedance of an inductor is J omega L, and the impedance of a capacitor is negative J over omega C. When two elements are in series, they share a single node. When two elements or more are in parallel, they share a single node pair. Impedances in series combine like resistors in series. So that means to find the equivalent impedance of series impedances, you add them together. So in the following figure, we have N impedances in series. So ZAB would be Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 and so on. Recall that the reciprocal of an impedance is admittance Y, which is equal to one over C, which can be represented as the sum of the real part G and the imaginary part B measured in either Siemens or Mohs. The real part of the admittance is conductance G and the imaginary part is susceptance, B, measured in Siemens. Impedances in parallel combine like resistors in parallel. So to find the equivalent impedance, you calculate the reciprocal of the sum of the admittances. So for example, if YAB were equal to Y1 plus Y2 plus YN and so on, then ZAB would be one over YAB as shown in the following figure. Just like with parallel resistors, there is a special case for two parallel impedances, which is the product over the sum. Okay, let's try an example. If the voltage across the following impedance is 10 with an angle of 75 degrees, and the current through the impedance is five with an angle of 35 degrees in milliamps, what series connected impedance forms Z? What parallel connected impedance forms Z? The first thing we need to do is to calculate Z. So Z, is equal to 10 with an angle of 75 degrees divided by 5 milli with an angle of 35 degrees which equals 2000 with an angle of 40 degrees or in rectangular form 1532 plus J 1286 ohms. So that series combination for Z would be equal to a resistor with a value of 1532 ohms in series with an inductor with a value of J1286 ohms. How do I know it's an inductor and not a capacitor? Well, because this is positive J and the impedance of an inductor is positive J omega L, it would not be a capacitor because it would have a negative coefficient. Okay, let's do part B. Part B is to find a parallel combination for Z. So we know that this is going to be one over the sum of the admittances. So since we have a real and imaginary part for Z, we can assume it's going to be one over the sum of a real part, which I call R or resistance, plus one over an imaginary part, which I call JX. X can neither be a positive or a negative number based upon whether it's an inductor or capacitor. But for now, we'll just call it X, which represents the reactants. So this gives us one over Z is equal to one over R plus one over JX. So we can calculate one over Z by putting one over 1532 plus J1286 in our calculator. And that yields one over Z is equal to 383 micro minus J 321 micro Siemens. So solving for R, you get R is equal to 2.6 kilo ohms and X is equal to negative 3,105 ohms, which means it is a capacitor. So Z between A and B would be a resistor with a value of 2.6 kilo ohms in parallel with a capacitor with a value of negative J3115 ohms. Now let's look at the next question. At what frequency would the following impedance be purely resistive? What this means is we're looking for a frequency where the inductor and capacitor impedance sum to zero. So the first thing we do is we redraw this figure in the complex number or the phasor domain. 
So since we have a capacitor first, this is going to be negative J over omega times two milli. Then we have a resistor, which is three ohms, and we have the inductor, which is J omega times 0 0.2. Since we want the result to be purely resistive, the three ohm resistor would still be there. So we set these two equations equal to each other. Negative J omega over omega times two milli should be equal to J omega times 0 0.2. So the J's cancel out and you have omega squared is equal to 2500. So the frequency where that impedance would be purely resistive would be 50 radians per second. Okay, let's do one more problem. For the following circuit, redraw it in the frequency domain and find the output voltage. So here we have a circuit that has four resistors and a capacitor. So I can redraw this in the complex number domain where VG is two with an angle of zero degrees in volts. And we have the 20 kilo ohm resistor here, the 80 kilo ohm resistor here, and that goes into the positive terminal on the op amp. And then connected to ground, we have the 160 kilo ohm resistor that goes in a negative terminal on the op amp. And we're gonna have a feedback impedance, which is the 100 in parallel with the resistor. I'm gonna call that ZF, and we're gonna calculate that in a minute. And the output is V naught. The first thing we need to do is to find the impedance for the 100 picofarad capacitor. If you look at the input two cosine 10 to the fifth T, omega is equal to 10 to the fifth radians per second. So the impedance of the capacitor is negative J over 10 to the fifth times 100 pico or negative J 100 K ohms. Since that's in parallel with a 200 K resistor, we would say ZF, the impedance, feedback impedance, is 200K in parallel with negative J 100K, which is the product over the sum. So it's 200K times negative J 100K divided by 200K minus J 100K. So ZF is equal to 40K minus J 80K ohms, and I'll put that on my circuit as well, 40K minus J, 80K ohms. Now what you should notice here is that this is really a non-inverting amplifier where the input right here, V positive, is amplified by one plus ZF over 160K. You can find VP by using the voltage divider. So VP would be 80, over 20 plus 80 times two with an angle of zero degrees, which is 1.6 with an angle of zero degrees. And that would be volts. So V out is equal to one plus ZF over 160K times V positive which is 2.154 with an angle of negative 21.8 degrees and the units are volts, or in the sinusoidal steady state, V naught of T is 2.154, the cosine of 10 to the fifth T minus 21.8 degrees. Okay, let's do our next example. For the following circuit, VG is equal to the cosine of 100 T volts, we draw it in the frequency domain and find the output voltage. So the first thing we should notice is that omega is equal to 100 radians per second. So we have a one microfarad capacitor. So ZC, which is negative J over omega C, would be negative J over 100 times one micro, which is negative J 10 kilo ohms. So the first circuit's in the time domain. And in the phasor domain, we would have VG, which is one with an angle of zero degrees in volts, 
10 kilo ohms, negative J, 10 kilo ohms for the capacitor, another 10 kilo ohm resistor, a positive terminal tied to ground, and a feedback resistor, which is 200 kilo ohms, and we're looking for V naught. So what you should see here is that this is really an inverting amplifier where the input here would be VI. So this inverting amplifier would be VO is equal to negative 200 over 10 times VI or negative 20 VI. So now let's figure out how we find VI. The way that we find VI is to do KCL at that node. So my KCL equation would be VI minus 1 over 10K plus VI over negative J 10K plus VI over 10K equals zero. That's one equation and one unknown. So when we solve for VI, we get 0 0.4472 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees. And the units are volts. So now, using the equation for the inverting amplifier, VO is equal to negative 20 times 0 0.4472 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees, or VO is equal to negative 8.944 with an angle of negative 26.57 degrees, or with a positive magnitude 8.944 with an angle of 153 degrees and the units are volts. So we've already examined KCL and KVL in the phasor domain and as you can imagine because KCL and KVL work the voltage divider and the current divider which are based upon KVL and KCL are also applicable to impedances. So if you notice this first circuit here, the voltage divider is Vn, the voltage across the impedance Zn is equal to Zn divided by the sum of all of the impedances times the source voltage. So basically you replace R with Z and you have the voltage divider for impedances. The current divider is very similar. The current divider is for parallel impedances and a source current just as the voltage dividers for series impedances and a source voltage. So to find the current through impedance N, it would be the parallel combination of all the impedances divided by Zn times the source current. There is a special case when you have only two impedances and it would be that if I want the current I1, then that would be Z2, the opposite impedance divided by the sum of the two in series times Is. Okay, let's look at an example of applying the current divider. Here we have a current source 4 cosine 2T in parallel with an inductor in series with a capacitor and in parallel with a 1 ohm resistor. So as always, the first thing we do is we convert this circuit from the time domain to the frequency or the phasor domain. So the source is 4 with an angle of 0 degrees in amps. The inductor is J omega L, where in this case, omega is two radians per second. So the inductor is J two ohms. The capacitor is negative J over two ohms. And the resistor is still one ohm. And we are looking for I naught, the current through the one ohm resistor. So I naught would be equal to, using our special case for two parallel impedances, J2 minus J over two, divided by the sum, J2 minus J over two plus one, times the source, which is four with an angle of zero degrees. So I naught 
is equal to 3.28 with an angle of 33.7 degrees and the units are amps. Okay, let's try an example that uses the voltage divider. For the following circuit, use the voltage divider to find Vx. The first thing, note that we have 35 e to the j pi over 4 volts, which is a phasor in polar form. So in angle notation, this would be 35 with an angle of 45 degrees, and the units are volts. So the first thing we're going to do is to redraw the circuit by combining the sources. The first thing to notice is that when you combine an independent and a dependent source, the result is a dependent source, and it's actually a voltage control voltage source with a value of 35 with an angle of 45 degrees minus 2Vx. The value of the resistor is still 10 ohms with Vx across it, and the inductor is still J25 ohms because the original problem was in the phasor domain. So the voltage divider relationship Vx would be equal to the resistance on top that we want 10 divided by the sum of the two impedances, 10 plus J25 times the source voltage, which is 35 with an angle of 45 degrees minus 2Vx. This is one equation and one unknown. So when we solve, we get Vx is equal to 8.96 with an angle of 5.19 degrees and the units are volts. This concludes our lecture on KCL, KVL, and combining impedances in series and parallel.